Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Giddy Gang Show. Ben Giddy Baker here with you once again. Danny Woodman, my partner in crime here. Nick Lanciano, the intrepid producer. Lurking, there he is, lurking behind the control <laughs> desk as usual. Uh, we're glad to be with you here. We got, what, like 12, 11 shipping days left until Christmas? Oh, buddy. Uh, and actually, speaking of that, today's show might be a little shorter than normal. Uh, it's been a heck of a busy week here at CB Giddy, and everybody uh, is still working hard here today to get the packages out onto the loading dock before the trucks come here in about an hour. So uh, we might have to cut today's show a little short so we can go help. Um, a few announcements. Uh, just today... Tickets went on sale for the New Orleans Cigar Box Guitar Festival, which is going to be held January 13th through the 15th down there in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, there is a link that Nick can paste in uh, that I put in the script where you can go to buy your tickets. I know Rob Roble said he's going to make the trek over from Florida. Even our good buddy Ken Hope I saw posted on Facebook that uh, he lives not too far from Atlanta. He looked into train ticket prices to mm -hmm. get from Atlanta down to New Orleans. That would be on Amtrak's Crescent, long-distance train. He said he could get from Atlanta to New Orleans for just $39. And by gosh, that sounds like a deal to me. Um, I'm still hoping, well, I guess Ken, if he does that, should hope too that uh, I keep reading on the interwebs that Amtrak might have to curtail some service uh, going into the early part of next year due to vaccination requirements and such. So I'm holding out hope that the City of New Orleans train is going to leave Chicago's Union Station on January 12th <laughs> as scheduled because I intend to be on it. And hopefully as, uh, everyone will be able to get down, well, not everyone, but uh all of our uh, favorite people will be able to get down to New Orleans for the festival. And if you can't, we'll see if we can get set up to live stream uh, some of it, at least some of it, to the Cigar Box Nation page. Um, and one more announcement. I'm not sure if she's tuned in, but want to send a shout out to our, our Cheryl, uh, one of the ladies that works here in the packing department at CB Giddy. Been having a, a rough go of it health wise, and we hope you. Hear this and get better soon, Cheryl. We miss you. Um, so without too much further ado, we got a few videos for you today, including one from Brett Gardner. He just sent it to us earlier today and posted it on some of the, the Facebook pages. It is him and his Cigar Box Serenaders band doing a, a beautiful song uh, down at, I believe it was last year's New Orleans. Actually, it might be two years ago. Uh, Cigar Box Guitar Fest. It's Norwegian Wood by some new band out of England that probably isn't going to catch on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lennon and McCartney and all them. So Brett and the, the guys doing Norwegian Wood uh, kind of as a, a celebration of the kickoff of this year's New Orleans Cigar Box Guitar Fest. Once again, tickets are now on sale. The link should be in the comments. And speaking of the comments, once this video starts, I'm going to pull them up on my phone so I can see who's out there and what you're saying. Danny and I got to talking about trains in the lead up to the show, and I forgot to get my phone out. <laughs> got a little excited about trains. So um, we're going to run this video from Brett Gardner to kick off today's show, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. <laughs>
don't you sing the melody once? you brett for sending that to us great stuff it was cool to see that full house there it looked like bill yaley walked in front of the camera there at the end i'm not sure if that was bill or not um so that was clearly not last year because last year's festival was held virtually uh so that was probably 2019 i wasn't able to make it down for the 2019 festival can't exactly remember why but anyway good time had by all down there and it's going to be a good time again this year so um Another thing, exciting thing, that has happened over the last couple of weeks and just went live today on the CB Giddy store website is a cool new product, actually a new invention, um, called the Bee Bender, the Relapse Bee Bender. And what this thing is, uh, I don't have one to show you because uh, the What's the Deal with Spiel segment this week, Shane's going to fully demo um what the bee bender is but it's kind of a cool story because the inventor of this basically it's an aftermarket um attachment you can put on a lap steel guitar or a cigar box guitar or other guitar with a top loading hard tail bridge you can attach this bee bender and it basically um let's acts like a pedal steel guitar the pedals it basically stretches the string and lets you uh, push down on that lever and raise the pitch of a string um, by a full step if you want to uh, so basically it's like an aftermarket not really a whammy bar but kind of that same concept lets you change the pitch of a string uh, really cool thing and it was invented by a guy a customer CB Giddy named Dana Valley out in California and he contacted us a while back sent a sample uh, I sent the sample down to Shane he got it installed on the guitar tried it out and said you know what this is really cool um, and Dana invented this he's a lap steel builder and player because he wanted a way an affordable way to add this pitch bending or note bending uh, capability to standard lap steels uh, because there are other aftermarket uh, options for doing this but they cost hundreds of dollars and he wanted a, a way for the average person to do it you know the DIY kind of people like us so we tried it out and uh, said you know what this is something that this is kind of what CB Giddy is all about people coming up with good ideas and being able to bring it to the wider world so um, as of today the B Bender and the the two and three string kit varieties of it are available on cbgiddy.com. CB Giddy is the exclusive online retailer, distributor of of this cool invention, patent pending invention. So uh, actually as an extra treat, uh, we'll get to the what's the deal with Spiel a little bit later, but Dana Valley, the inventor of this uh, device, is going to 
kind of give the intro to Shane's uh, piece later. So get on CB Giddy, check it out. There's a nice listing written up. There's a demo video in the listing. Uh, we've got a link to it. Uh, it's probably already been posted in. And uh, check it out. It's a really neat way to add some additional uh, sound capabilities to existing builds new builds whatever it's made to be added after the fact without any drilling or routing or anything like that so pretty cool stuff um i think what we'll do now i think i'll do a song real quick um just a, a brief update danny and i you can't really see but in front of us here there's a the new mixing board and some other stuff we have been continuing to do some recording here in the Juke Shack studio, working towards an album. Uh, just yesterday, we recorded a couple of Danny's originals. What What were they, Dan? Uh, highballing, and uh, I've already forgotten the other one. <laughs> Cause I'm Trust old. Rod Cradle. Trust, uh, Trust Rod Cradle, thank you. Yeah, Trust Rod Cradle, a good hobo song about a guy riding the uh, the rods underneath an old boxcar. And what, uh, highballing, it's kind of like an anthem, a, a tribute to the... The steam engine. The great American steam locomotive. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. The machine that kind of helped make this country what it is. So uh, a couple of good songs. Now my job is to take those raw recordings and mix them all down and get them ready to go on the album. But once those are done, we'll have five. Five songs in the can with a few more to go before we can finish this up. Um, so the song I'm about to do, I've done it once before on the show. It's been a while. Uh, I call it the engine house and there's a little bit of a story behind it and it was brought back to my mind uh, in the last couple of days because I'm working on the book about my train trip earlier this year when I went all the way around the country by Amtrak and part of that trip took me through northern Ohio where I grew up uh, passed right by where the tracks from the little short line railroad that ran through my hometown uh, connected with the main line, the old New York Central main line there that crosses Sandusky Bay before heading on towards Toledo. So a lot of the, the things, songs I've written, writing I've done, uh, is always kind of focused on used to be, things that used to be, the road through yesterday, things like that and this song is kind of a, a, a celebration and more of a lament about what's gone you know uh, those of you who maybe grew up somewhere and then moved away from there later in life and only get to go back every so often like I did from where I grew up in Ohio there's there's it's like there's ghosts in your mind uh, of things that used to be and are now gone and lost uh, and going back home, if you can ever, you can't ever really truly go back home because it only exists in your own memory. Um, going back every year, every two years, it's like snapshots of change. The people who have lived there all along, the change has been gradual. A new building goes up, something's torn down, a, a forest is cleared. Uh, but when you go back, every so often it's more of like a stop motion video of change and so I'm, I'm kind of working through that as I work on this book telling the tale of my journey uh, these concepts of, of of how things change and what's lost and what's gained Another G right? Yeah, uh, C. And if you can tell just by the way I'm talking about it I don't quite have it all figured out <laughs> yet. I'm still working through um, some of these things. So this is called The Engine House. And it's about an actual engine house that stood right in the center of the little town of Marblehead, Ohio. And it's not there anymore. In a little quarry town on Lake Erie's southern shore The men have dug stone there two hundred years or more And they built themselves a railroad to haul out the rock 
And those steam whistles echo through the roofs and the docks. But now they've torn the engine house down. It stood for 90 years or more in the center of the town. And those hard-working engines and the men who called her home, they're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. Well, they dragged out the engines out into the yard. Those old locomotives that once worked so hard. Then they fired up their torches and they cut them up for scrap. It's a way of life that's gone and it ain't ever coming back. Because they've torn the engine house down. It stood for 90 years or more in the center of the town. And those hard-working engines and the men who called her home. They're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. When the wreckers were done, there was nothing left. Another piece of history that was gone in a breath. And today you'd never know where that old engine house stood. But no one gave a damn, and now it's gone for good. And they've torn the engine house down. It stood for 90 years or more in the center of the town. And those hard-working engines and the men who called her home. Well, they're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. Take it down. It seems that the past don't matter anyway To the people in the suits who call the shots far away Well, to save a couple of dollars, they'll raise it to the ground Cause if it ain't making money, they don't want it around And so they tore the engine house down it stood for 90 years or more in the center of the town. And those hard-working engines and the men who called her home. Well, they're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. Well, the engine house and depot torn down and hauled away. Those sad abandoned relics of a former day. So many things have gone from the town I call home. I still see the ghosts when I wander there alone. But they've torn the engine house down. It stood for 90 years or more in the center of the town. And those hard-working engines and the men who called her home. Yes, they're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. Oh, we're all just a memory that will fade and be gone. Hmm. Not a happy song, I guess, but, you know, <laughs> times do change. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, but that sounded good. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I'm not able to get the YouTube or the Facebook comments up. Facebook's being a butthead again. Um, but I'd like to say hello to everyone I, whose names I can see out there on YouTube. Every week uh, we see Ken Hope out there and Greg Tiffany and Gary DeRosiers. Marty Tauber out there saying that uh, his wife, Gail, is doing better. We're glad to hear that. Uh, Dana Valley himself out there, the inventor of the B Bender. Good to see you out there, man. Um, MT Grizzly 52 out there. By gosh, we got all the goons. Gary J. Uh, we're glad you're here with us. Richard Stumpf, Steve Strings, hmm. 
Good stuff. So uh, we've got a video now for you from our good buddy Tim Henderson, who's been become quite prolific lately with the videos and is good enough to send them to us, and we love it. Uh, we wish more of you would make videos and send them to us, even just short just short shout out saying hello. You don't even have to sing or play anything. We just love to get a video from you and put it up there on the big screen and, and get you on the Giddy Gang show. So here's Tim Henderson. What's he uh what's he doing, Nick? Do we know? Um, Marvelous Toy. Marvelous Toy. I'm not sure I know this one, so I'm fixing to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> We and I was just a wee little lad, full of health and joy. My father homeward came one day and gave to me a toy. A wonder to behold it was with many colors bright. And the moment I laid eyes on it, it became my heart's delight. It went zip when it moved, a pop when it stopped. A woo when it stood still I never knew just what it was And I guess I never will The first time that I picked it up I had a big surprise For there on its bottom were two big buttons That looked like big green eyes I first pushed one and then the other And then I twisted its lid and when I put it down again, this is what it did. It went zip when it moved, a pop when it stopped, a whirl when it stood still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. It pushed March left, and then March right, and then marched under a chair. And when I looked where it had gone, wasn't even there. I started to cry, but my daddy laughed, for he knew that I'd find. When I turned around, my marvelous toy would be chugging from behind. It went zip when it moved, pop when it stopped, the whoo when it stood still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. Well, the years have gone by too quickly, it seems. I have my own little boy. And yesterday I gave to him my marvelous little toy. His eyes nearly popped right out of his head. He gave a squeal of glee. Neither one of us knows just what it is, but he loves it just like me. It still goes if when it moves, a pop when it stops, a woo when it stands still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. Well, thanks again for sending in uh, that video, Tim. We appreciate it. Um, what we've got for you next is another Danny Woodman original, and it's the closest uh, that we're going to come on this show to a Christmas song. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, about the song and, and how you came to write it, Dan? Well, what happened was um, I was, because as many of you know, I collect old Lionel trains, and a lot of what I collect is... Ooh. The mic. <laughs> yes. A lot of what I collect is from the 1940s, 50s, and um, so, and I said, you know, this probably belonged to somebody's grandfather, because I collect them mostly at antique shops, and to, like, this probably got auctioned off, They're, somebody's grandfather passed away, and I'm keeping them on, so I wrote a song called Grandpa's Train Set. Right. So it is, uh, I, I believed it all along, but... Um, it's a fictional, yeah. fictionalization. I don't what? have my, gr neither of my, gr well, <laughs> my mother's father, he died in 1965, so I never met him. My father's father wasn't a train guy. Yep. 
All right. Using the stock car race. Grandpa's train set. Yep. So, yeah, here we go. So I think now, without further ado, we are going to dive into what's the deal with Spiel. Uh, once again, just today, we launched a brand new product for CB Giddy, invented by Dana Valley, who you're going to see here in just a moment. A, an awesome way to add some additional sound capabilities, some additional functionality to pretty much any instrument, stringed instrument, that uses a top-loading hardtail-style bridge. So lap steel guitars, cigar box guitars, uh, conventional electric guitars. You can add this B bender to it and get some really cool sounds out of it. So without further ado, here is this week's very special What's the Deal with Spiel? I am Dana with Relapse. I'm the inventor of the B bender and you're watching What's the Deal with Spiel? <laughs> Hold on. There. The light's on now. All the talk today is about this. The Relapse B-Bender. <laughs> relapse B-Bender. It is made by Dana Valley from California. Another small business. And he came up with this idea to make an easy-to-install version of the Parsons White B Bender. At the end of this segment, I'm going to put my demo video I made for CB Giddy. Simply put, 
A B bender takes one string and raises it up so it sounds like a steel guitar. Two of the other strings stay the same, but the high one goes up. Giddy sent me this to demo and I tried all different things. I even bought a lap steel guitar. I have sitting here, there's a string missing because that's where I had this originally installed in here. Let me show you the demo video I made from that. As you can see, I suck at playing lap steel. Um, I did my best. I tuned it to a C6 tuning to get the Nashville sound and was trying my best, but man, it just, I have a tough time playing lap steel. Uh, it's just not my thing. So I went looking through all my guitars and found my exit sign guitar, which has a CB Giddy hardtail bridge, and it is a top loading bridge, which means the strings go in through the back here. Well, that's all you need for one of these B-benders. The string goes through the B-bender and into the saddle here, and whenever you push down, it stretches it. You'll see it in the demo at the end. So I had to go through buying a lap steel, installing it on a lap steel, trying to learn how to play that, and making that quick little demo, and then going through all my guitars, putting this on one of my guitars, and learning how to play this. In doing so, I actually came up with a new tuning. I talk about it a little in the demo video, but let me show it to you. It is this A. The second string is a C sharp, but for the high string, I needed to make it so it would bend and sound right. And after messing around with a few different things, I came up with a B. So when you bend it, that B goes to a C sharp, which is the middle string. So it matches it. It's one octave higher, and I'm not getting it right. And you, it takes a while get, getting used to this bending so that you bend it a perfect step up. So in order to make a demo, I had to come up with some music as well. I started out using a slide. Check that out, it's a Rocky Mountain Shane Spill signature. You know where to get it. It's kind of cool with the slide. Maybe if I had a four string cigar box guitar or a five string cigar box guitar, um, a slide would sound even better. But then I came up with this lick that's in the demo. idea what I'm playing. I don't know what chords I'm playing. Whenever I come up with a new tuning on, on a cigar box guitar, and listen, you guys need to hear this. When I come up with a new tuning, all I do is start putting my fingers different places on the fretboard and stumble around to see what sounds good. And for this, I started with... Ooh, that was cool. I don't know. It's, it's like some A chord. When I push on this, it makes it sound even cooler. And then here, and then to a minor. And as I move down to here, I'm still keeping the bender pushed down and let it go. When's the last time you tried a new tuning on your cigar box guitar? Try different things. See what sounds good to you. And uh, maybe come up with a new song. Here's that demo video. Here's how to install a Relapse B-Bender onto a cigar box guitar loaded with a CB Giddy hardtail bridge. My test instrument is a three-string cigar box guitar with a body made from an old exit sign. It proved to be the perfect instrument to mount the new B-Bender on it. The guitar was made by Gary DeRosiers back in 2017. 
Now, the instructions for the relapse are for lap steel guitar, but this is pretty much the same thing for a CBGD hardtail bridge. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. Now, what you're going to need is a hardtail bridge that is top loading, which means the strings get loaded into the back end of the bridge here. As you can see, I'm using a little Allen wrench. That's where the strings go. The strings do not get fed from the bottom of the guitar. They have to go in the side for this thing to work. All you need is a screwdriver to install the Relapse B-Bender. Now, for me, I'm using an electric screwdriver to make this go fast. You're going to start out by choosing which string saddle your B-Bender is going to be used on. And for this one, it's the high saddle, and I've removed it there. Here's the B-Bender unit. I've already put the bender lever onto the bender bracket, the back part, and I've installed the little saddle screw in the very end. That saddle screw goes in the back of the hardtail bridge, just like we removed the black one that was originally on there. Now the B-Bender comes with a roller saddle, so we use that as a replacement. I put the spring in the saddle screw, and then I get the roller saddle and install it. Now I'm going to fast forward the video here because it's a little tricky to get that saddle in there. Let's get that done. Success! And you can watch and see how this device works. As you push it down, the saddle pulls back. Once you're done with that, make sure to get a small Allen wrench and set the saddle height adjustment screws to the saddle. You want to take them about the same level as the other saddles on your guitar. And once you have strings on, you can get that height just right. At this point in the game, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to string this guitar. Now, I want this B-Bender to sound like a steel guitar. So I went through a few different ideas, and I came up with this tuning of a C sharp and B. Um, I'm not really sure what the chord is or what I'm trying to play, however it works. So the strings I chose were a .046 for the A, the middle string was a .032 for the C sharp, and the high string was a .016 for the B. Because this is a top loading hardtail bridge, the strings go in the back over the saddles and up to the tuners. Now let me show you what I did with the B-Bender. The B-Bender has a hole in the back of it where the string is fed through. See right there. And you feed your string through that hole and also through the hole of the hardtail bridge. And then get it to feed up through the saddle. It can be a little tricky and you may need to bend that string a little so it points upward. But once you get that, get that string fed through, and then you tune it up. Ha! There we go. Thank goodness. All right, I'm going to take those strings, put them up on the tuners. I won't do that on camera. But again, look at this. This is how it works. You push down on the B-Bender, and it pulls back on that string, creating more string tension and raising up the note up to a full step. You'll see it in the next demonstration as I play this for you. Let's do it. So here we are. The strings are on. I've got the B bender ready to go. I even turned the light on on my exit sign guitar. Before I forget, I want to show you, in my demo video, my guitar swells like a steel guitar. I am using a crescendo pedal, 
And what this pedal does is it acts like a volume pedal. If you press it on and play a note, it goes wow. So it kills the attack. Off, my guitar sounds like this. On, it sounds like this. And one of the things about steel guitar is that swell. So when I put the crescendo pedal on, it gives me that. You can also do the same thing with a volume pedal, but I got the crescendo because I really like Phil Kagi and what he would do with volume knob swells. And there's times when I just want to be able to play those swells in a lead and not have to worry about stomping on a volume pedal. The crescendo is one of those one trick pony pedals, but it's a cool trick. <laughs> What's the deal with Shane's bookshelf? Well, as you can see, things have changed. Uh, in my last video, I said I was getting rid of my CD collection because I listen to streaming music pretty much full time now. And so my CD cases are gone. I have some of my crazy instruments up here in the background. What do you think? I got two new books this week and I've already devoured them. Uh, first off is this one, The Hidden History of Mississippi Blues by Roger Stoley. Roger Stoley, was an advertising executive who left his job, moved to Mississippi, and started the Cathead Blues Music Books and Art Store. It's down in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And this is his interviews with a lot of great Mississippi blues guys, including a fantastic one with Honey Boy Edwards. Honey Boy Edwards was with Robert Johnson when he died. Um, just a great book all around. Hidden History of Mississippi Blues, cathead.biz. I also got this from cathead.biz. Guys, this, this, hold on. Another Ed Stilly. This guy is another Ed Stilly. The book is called Hanging Tree Guitars by Freeman Vines. Freeman Vines makes his own electric guitars, and he has been searching for a tone that he heard in a gospel guitarist back in the 50s. And the tone hit him so hard that for the rest of his life, he's been building his own guitars, searching for that tone. And his designs are truly unique, fantastic designs, crazy shapes, everything else. Now this book is an art piece in and of itself. All the photos were done with a tin type camera by Timothy Duffy and they spend a lot of time talking about four instruments that Freeman made from a tree that was cut down. That tree was used to lynch people in the Deep South. Um, so there's a lot of talk of social justice and things in this book. For me, what I got out of this book is Freeman Vines is one of those Ed Stilly type people. Yes, the, the hanging tree guitars are haunting to think about. It shows a lot of his other guitars that he's built in there and he uses different ways of chambering the inside of the guitars. His sense of resonance with wood is his own in his own universe. I could keep talking about this but serious just go buy this book. He's another Ed Stilly um, and he's still alive. He's somebody I want to meet. I want to talk to, I want to ask questions, I want to hear his guitars, and it would be a dream to even play one. So, Hanging Tree Guitars, uh, Freeman Vines, get this book. That's what the dealio with Shane's bookshelf. <laughs> Well, thank you, Shane, for putting all that together. It's a great demo uh, and how-to, how to install video that Shane created for the B-Bender uh, lap steel and cigar box guitar hardtail bridge B-Bender system created by Dana Valley. Um, I did want to say hello. I finally got the Facebook comments to display. So we got our good buddy Jimbo Bird out there, Brett Gardner, thanking us for sharing the video. Looking forward to seeing you down there in New Orleans. 
Uh, I also saw Michael Capato out there. Good to see you, buddy. Primitive Guitars. Steve Klinger, Jimbo Burt, Keith Rerick, William Sneed. Ah, all the good ones. Louis the Mana, John Matrician. Thank you for joining us here on this uh, show before the show. Now, speaking of shows, next week, it being Friday, kind of the last major shipping day of the Christmas season, at this point, we honestly don't know what we're going to be able to do for a show. Maybe a compilation of past year's Christmas songs. We'll see. No promises for next week. It's been a crazy busy time here at CB Giddy, um, which is a good thing. You know, there's mm -hmm. worse problems to have. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We've got one more video for you that our good buddy Kale sent in. I saw he just joined us over there on YouTube. I'm glad you're out there. Uh, so we're going to run this, and then we'll come back and... Play it out. Looks like we've got a show. Howdy, folks. Happy Sunday morning. I got an 80s breakup anthem for you today. I mean, this song came out in 1986, and if you were between probably age 12 and 28, you probably blasted this to your heartbreak at some point. It's just that kind of song. And it's a big old 80s production, so it's got the synth and the faux orchestra and all that powerful tune. But um, I heard this song recently. I don't think I'd heard it in years. And I heard it recently when I was in a store. It was on the PA. And I kind of started listening to the lyrics. And I was like, oh, that's just a country song. So I got home and I grabbed a cigar box guitar here. And I was like, let's see if I can do this as a country song. So this is what this song would sound like if you stripped it down to just a country song. This is Roxette from 1986. Lay Whisper. <laughs> It's 
Yeah, buddy. Thank you for that, Kale. And thank all of you again for joining us today. We've had a good time. Ended up filling most of an hour. I wasn't sure we had enough content to do it but somehow we pulled through so like i say next week's show we're going to kind of leave it up in the air and see what we're able to do amidst the the final moments of the holiday rush but for now let's sing about the giddy gang show